All right, now let's create our own web component with stencil.js. In order to do that, I will create a new terminal here within VS Code, and I will type in npm run generate. And now it will ask me for the component tag name. Now, when you create new components, the tag names should always be unique. So you will always need a unique uh, tag name. So for example, you shouldn't call it video because there's already a video HTML tag. So um, I would recommend that you use a prefix. So just to be sure that the component doesn't exist yet, my prefix would be L4. So feel free to use any prefix that you want. And just for the sake of this tutorial to keep it very simple, as simple as possible is um, I want to create a button, right? So I'm just gonna call it L4 button. And now I can choose which files are supposed to be generated as well. So if you take a look at this directory here, you got a CSS, so in a end-to-end -end testing and a uh, unit testing file. For me, it's okay to just use the style sheet so I can go up and down with the arrow and select and deselect with a space bar. So I don't, in my case, I do not want the end-to-end -end testing and all right, I will leave the unit testing and that's enough for me. Style sheet is okay and I will accept with enter. And now the following files have been generated. And if I take a look here on the left-hand side of my project, if I go to components, I can see here my component and I can also see this L4 button right here. And if I click this L4 button, I will see uh, that it has generated a TSX file. It has automatically named this component for me, so I didn't have to do it uh, myself. It also added the correct URL for my style sheet, and it also has created a new uh, class for me that returns this JSX right here. And as you can see, this component doesn't have any props yet. It doesn't have any methods. It just has this host element and it has this slot tag right here. And this slot tag is kind of like a placeholder. So you can pass children, just like you can pass children down a React component. You can also pass children down to this component right here. And then this slot will be replaced by the children. So let me just do that very quickly, just to show you, just to give you an example. So I would say L4 button, and now I can add some children in here. I can, for example, add a real button that says, click me. I will add a break. Now I will save it, switch back switch back here and now I can see that it has added the button and um, it has just rendered my HTML button uh, that I used here. So if I go to the developer tools, I can see that my button is right here. And now if you take, if you open up, if you expand this uh, tag, you can see here that there is the shadow DOM. So that's what the shadow DOM is actually all about. So you get, got this button, you got this tag right here uh, on the surface. So on the surface, it looks like a regular, regular HTML tag. But if you go deeper, then you can see here, um, that's the shadow DOM. And underneath that, there lies this um, regular HTML tag, which is in my case, just the button that, and it says, click me. So by using slots, you can uh, create placeholders, sort of. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about is this host element. And as you can see here uh, in the explanation, the host element is a functional component that can be used at the root of the render function to set attributes and event listeners to the host element itself. And um, this is basically comparable to the React fragment. And um, so it's just like the root element but it won't be rendered to the DOM. So it has a host element in here, but if I take a look at the DOM, then it's not there anymore. So let's go and create this button. 
First of all, I'm going to delete this button in here because I want my L4 button tag to render a button and I don't know, I, I, I don't want to pass a button as a child. So I'm going to delete that. And in here within my button TSX, I'm going to say button. Now the text of the button or the, the content of the button should be defined within a prop. So I want to say, I want to be able to say, uh, for example, button text and say, click me from in here. I want to pass down a string. So I would have to define that here within my component. Now I would have to say at because I'm using a decorator say prop call that method now i would type the name of the property which in this case is button text and since this is typescript i will have to define the type of this prop and it will be of type string now you can see here that i used the camel case here for the prop within my component so this is button text in camel case. But if I use the prop in my HTML tag, then I will um, use this kebab case right here. And now I want to display those props. Now I want to display this prop right here within my button. So I will say this dot. And since we're working with TypeScript, I get a recommendation what method I would use. And I would use my prop right here button tags. Now I would save it. And now I can go back to the browser and take a look if everything worked. And as you can see here, my button is still working. So now let's add some functionality to our component. For example, I want my button to go to Google every time I click on it. So this would be a very useful tool for every developer. Just click this button and Google something. So first of all, we can define a method and we'll just call it handle click. And within that handle click method, I will say window open and I will say google.com focus. Right now I will add that method to my button and that is done very easily by saying on click add this the handle click and now we can test our button once again and now it has refreshed automatically now i can just click here and as you can see it opened up google for me so the functionality is working now let's add some styling to our button as well and to style my button, I will just go here to this l4button.css. Now it's very important to know that with the shadow DOM enabled, which we have here and which would work on all of the newer browsers, with the shadow DOM enabled, that means that elements within the shadow DOM are all scoped. So um, if you define a style, for example, if you say button, and if I would add a background red, then that background red would only apply to my web component since that is part of, um, since that is within the shadow DOM. If you take a look here at the developer tools, if you go back here, you can see that this button right here is below the shadow DOM. So that means it's scoped. So any style that you would define within your CSS file right here would only apply to all of those buttons underneath that shadow DOM. So we can also uh, add another, another button within our HTML file, but that other button wouldn't be affected by the CSS that we defined within our web component in here. So that is another huge advantage of our web components and our shadow DOM that we are using compared to just regular HTML tags. Now, as for the styling of the button, we're going to keep it really, really simple. First of all, I'm going to unset everything 
Now I want the button to have a background with this hex code, which is a sort of a green button. Now I want the button to have a padding of 15 pixels and 25 pixels. Also a border radius. Um, font size should be 18 pixel. I would also add a font family, just very basic sans serif. Um, cursor pointer. What else do we need? I want the color to be white. And that's basically it, right? A very, very basic and simple button. Now let me switch back to my browser at refresh and for some reason it didn't quite work now let me investigate on why that is and I will come back in a second so it did work and just the only problem that I had was that I didn't restart my uh, my development server after I generated a new um, component so every time you generate a new component make sure to restart your server just to make sure that all of the changes are there so that's what my button will look like and it's fully functional if i click on it i will switch to google and it takes all of the css now just as a test just to make sure that all of the stylings are actually scoped i will add another another button tag right below my my button and I will call it uh, or it should say new button whatever just to make sure that the stylings I've added to my web component do not affect any other components on this HTML right and here you can see it here's my button it says click me and below it it says new button because this button right here is not scoped within the shadow DOM right it's just a regular button right here on the DOM so those are the very basics of web components. That's how they actually work. Now, in the beginning, I said that a major advantage of web components is that you can reuse them in any project and how to actually reuse them in any project that I will show you in the next step. So stay tuned. Thank you.